Hello, so how do you make your Angular apps truly responsive? That is, get them to work and look good on all sort of screen sizes such as mobile screen sizes, tablets, or even large desktop screen sizes. So I was faced with this question recently when I completed the Material uh, Theme Builder app, uh, as you can see here. Now this looks really great on large desktop screen sizes, as you can see here. You can open a theme panel here like this. And it's really nice because the user can see the side nav on the left, on the side nav on the right as well, and you can change stuff. Uh, all at the same time, when you start reducing the width, for example, and you reduce the size to, for example, the tablet screen size, you're going to see that things are getting squished. And then when you do it further on the mobile side, you can see that it gets really unusable. The user can't use it anymore because all of the side nerves are coming up on top of the screen. Now you can reduce this, but the layout is still really pretty bad and it's not appearing that nice. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how we make such an app truly responsive by using a combination of strategies like CSS and the Angular CDK Breakpoint Observer and even Signals. Now the final result I'm going to show you is deployed on this uh, URL, the link which is given in the description. And you can see that in this case, the layout adjusts itself to the screen size. And when you try to reduce it, you can see that when we reduce the width here, this comes a point where this side nav actually becomes over. And then when you reduce it further, you can see that the left side nav also becomes over and you can see that the user can actually see all of the content pretty easily and also switch the themes here, just like you would expect a normal functioning app to be on mobile screens. And when you go back to the larger screen size, you can see that it can go back to the side mode that it, it was. So hang around till the end because we're going to build exactly this and let's get started. Okay, so let's go back to the original unresponsive material theme builder and uh, see what the exact problem is. So if you go, for example, if we open the theme selector panel here and we reduce the width, you can see that the, the side navs actually cloud everything out. So this is because the side nav is in the side mode. So the Angular Material side nav actually provides uh, two or three modes in fact. We are only interested in the uh, side mode and the over mode. So the side mode is when it actually pushes the content towards the side and the side nav is always open. And this is really nice for large screens because the user has a lot of real estate and the user can have all of the options available at all of the times. But for smaller screens, it makes more sense for the side nav to be in the over mode. Now in the over mode, it sort of appears on top of the content and there is a backdrop associated with it, uh, just like you have a dialogue at the top. So this gives you a lot of space uh, behind that to actually show the content. So. Basically, what we want to do is that in smaller screen sizes, we want to change the mode of this side nav and this side nav to the over mode. But how do we do that exactly? So for responsive design, always the preference has to be CSS first. And that is because CSS is fast. CSS is handled natively by the browser. We don't need to execute any special JavaScript for it. Our app remains fast as well. I mean, you only need to change the styles if you want to change anything in the future. But in this case, can we actually use CSS here? Because this doesn't involve changing the appearance, this actually involves changing the behavior of the components, which we can only change when we can change the component input properties. So here, then the second best option is to use the Angular CDK Breakpoint Observer. This is a utility package provided by the Angular CDK package. And if you go in your Angular Material components, now the CDK components, uh, CDK uh, utilities are basically the building blocks of the Angular Material components itself. So when you install Angular Material, the CDK is going to be auto-installed along with it. And when you go in the Angular Material website, the docs, you can go to the CDK section and you can see there are lots of utilities that they provide. We are only interested in the layout utility here. Now in the layout utility, they provide a Breakpoint Observer service. Now this Breakpoint Observer service provides a function called observe, as you can see here. And this takes in a set of breakpoints just in the same way that you would give to a media query in CSS. And it's going to give back an observable or emitter value whenever the screen size changes and that speci those specific breakpoints change the state from true to false or false to true depending on your breakpoints. So this is perfect for our use case here because we want to use code to actually change the behavior of the side nav component. So here, because we can't change the CSS and media queries cannot change, you know, the input properties of a component, we will have to end up using this breakpoint service. So now how do we use this? Now let's go back to our code here. And if we go our code here, this is the app component. And this is the mode that we want to change um, programmatically 
but based on the screen size. We can actually inject our breakpoint observer here because we already have material installed and so the CDK package is already installed as well. But I would like to keep the RxJS and observable stuff now post signals, I want to keep it away from the component because it doesn't make sense to keep those things in the component itself. So what I want to do is I want to encapsulate all of that responsive functionality into a new service. So how do we do that now? So let's create a new service and let's do ng service. And we're going to keep it in the services folder because we already have some services here. We're going to call this the responsive service. All right. Let's skip the test for it for now. And if we go in service here, now we have our responsive service created. So the first thing we need to do here is to, we need to inject our breakpoint observer as you saw. So let's do this breakpoint observer and let's inject this breakpoint observer from ending angular CDK layout. Next, we want to define our breakpoints. So for those breakpoints, I have defined about three breakpoints suitable for this app where I want, you know, changes to happen to my components. So in my case, I have defined three breakpoints, small, medium and large. So let's define it here. So I'm going to define the variables here. I'm going to call this the small one. And it is going to be very similar, in fact, the same as we use the media queries. So we are going to give for the small one, we are going to give a maximum width of 600 pixels. So this is the mobile screen size. Then we have medium. And this is going to be somewhere between the small and the large uh, width. So it's going to have a minimum width of Let's make it 601 pixels just to give that extra one pixel space and so that these don't get mixed up. And we're going to do and maximum width will be 1000 pixels here, right? And then for the large one, we are going to give a minimum width of 1001 pixels, all right? So these are our three breakpoints. Now, how do we define the breakpoint observer observe method? Let's create an RHS observable for this purpose. So we are going to call this screen width here. It's going to be an observable. So we are going to do breakpoint observer dot observe and it takes in an array. Let's give in this dot small, this dot medium and this dot large here. Okay. Now this is going to give back an object containing the breakpoints and their status, whether it's true or false. Okay. But uh, you remember I said that we want to have signals in the component. So we actually want to consume this as signals. So let's convert this to a signal and let's create a screen width signal here. Let's do two. Our two signal is not going to get auto imported. So we want to add an import here from Angular Core and RxJS interop. Now it's going to give an option of update import from this. So now two signal actually converts an observable to a signal and it actually subscribes to that observable. So we don't have to do it ourselves. Okay. So let's give screen width. In fact, instead of screen width, we can also give this whole thing itself. Okay. Great. So we have a signal which basically gives, which is basically an object of the breakpoints at any time. Because when it, the breakpoint observer observe changes, it's going to update the signal itself. Great. But we want to provide a more easier way for the component to consume this responsive behavior. So we're going to provide three computeds derived from the screen width so that the component can use it really easily. So let's remove this constructor from here and let's do small widths. This is going to be a computed. So what it's going to do is this is going to access the screen width signal. This is going to be an object which is going to contain the breakpoints object. And in these breakpoints, we can then look for the small breakpoint. Now, if it is true, the small width is going to be true. If it is breakpoint is false, the small width is going to be false. That is exactly what we want. So small width and let's make this medium width, medium. And let's make this large width. Let's make this large. Great. So we have now three computeds or signals that we can use in our components. Okay. Now let's go back to our component and see how we can use this. So we can actually uh, inject this responsive service here and we can use it directly in the mode here. But let's keep our templates a bit cleaner. And I want to create computeds here to encapsulate that functionality. So let's first do it for our theme selector side nav. Now for the theme selector side nav, if we go in our app here, I just want to show you how do we actually want this behavior to be. So I judge from my app that this layout looks fine and the width at this point is 1200 pixels. But when it comes back to about 1000 pixels and it reduces further from 1000, you can see that it starts to get squished in this data here or this layout here gets, starts to get squished in. So this is a good time to actually make this site nav as over because there's not enough space here. So this breakpoint is then going to be less than 1000, which means this is going to be medium and small. 
So if the screen width is large, then we want this side nav's mode to be side. Otherwise, we want it to be over. All right. So let's add this functionality in our component. So we are going to do theme selector mode. This is going to be a computed. And in this, we're going to check first of all, or in fact, we first want to inject the responsive service here. All right. So if this dot responsive service dot large width. So if it is the large width, then we want the mode to be side because there's enough space to show the theme selector easily alongside the content. But if it's not, then that is, if it is small or medium, then we can do it over. All right. So let's add this in the template. In the mode here, we are going to convert this into this notation so that we can use, we can assign a variable to it. And then we can do theme selector mode and we can do this, get the value. So let's save this and test it out. So now when we test this out, let's open this. This is about 1200 pixels. When we reduce this and we go in about 1000 pixels, you can see that the layout behind this changes because there's more space to show it. And this theme selector actually goes to an over mode. When we go back to it. You can see that it goes to side mode again. Great. That's all that we needed. Okay. Let's do then for the left sidebar here. Now for the left sidebar, we only want to do it when it goes into the mobile state, when there is absolutely no space available. So we want to do it when it's less than 600, right about here. All right. So for less than 600, it is the small width. So let's create a component selector mode here. Let's make it component. And we're going to do this small width. So if it is small width, we're going to do over. Otherwise, it's going to become, going to remain side. And then let's put this to this mode here. All right. Okay. Let's test this out now. So you can see that we have the theme selector here. So when it goes here, the theme selector becomes over mode. We can tuck it in. And when we come here to six, then you can see this becomes mode. And you can see the problem of the site navs is now resolved because now the user can open it and close it in the mobile screen and actually change things as well and then tuck it right back in just like it happens in normal mobile responsive design. Okay, so this problem is resolved using the Angular CDK Breakpoint Observer. Now, the last problem now is of the layout itself, of the content. So you can see that when we reduce the size here, you can see things are getting squished and it actually should stack underneath each other just like it happens in mobile views. So this is not really that nice for the user to see. So how do we resolve that? Now, in this case, the problem is purely a CSS style based problem. So you can actually use for this purpose. So we are not going to use any JavaScript, any complex breakpoint observer for this, because for this, it makes more sense to use CSS. So let's go to our input component. And you can see here the CSS is pretty simple at this point, because I just wanted to show the content in the form of a grid. And I have given a static three column grid here. Now you can use media queries to actually change this grid column, but there is a new way to do things. In fact, not a new way, but it's an old trick, but I always use this when I want to create a responsive grid in CSS. And I also have, incidentally, I also have a blog post on my website here, create a responsive grid and angular with CSS. And this blog post actually explains all of this stuff. So you can go over it if you would like to know more detail about it. Here, I'm just going to show you the operative part of it, which is this line, the grid template columns. So earlier you could, you saw in my code that I created a three column layout here, but in this case, you can also give autofill in the number of columns. So this means that the CSS grid is going to adjust itself, the number of columns. Now it is going to do that based on this min max function. So this is going to be a range and this lower range, this higher range is one FR, which means that the columns are going to be spaced evenly. But this lower range actually means the lowest size your column can take. So if it's lower than this size, then the grid is going to auto adjust itself and it's going to reduce the number of columns. So this is actually the, in short, the science or the, or the technique behind this, behind this code. So I'm just going to copy this code here. I'm going to reuse this in my own code here in inputs. And let's try this out. Now you can see that when we have this about 1200 pixels, you can see we have three columns because there's enough space for it. Now, when we open the theme selector, you can see it automatically adjusts the space for it because there's no space for it. So it automatically makes sure that the column is at least 250 pixels. If it's less than 250 pixels, it reduces the number of columns. All right. So when we start reducing it, you can see that when it goes to the over mode, there's more space here. So you get two of them. 
and when we get it back you can see there are three of them then when we reduce it further you can see that it goes to it nicely tucks in the it goes into the stacked version of the, or the mobile screen version that is very common uh, in mobile responsive layouts and when you increase it again you can see it goes back to two first and then it goes back to the rest of this so it's really nice and at one point it also goes back to four columns based on the large desktop screen sizes and if the desktop screen size is even larger and you don't have any breakpoint for it even then is going to adjust the grid according to its size so you, you can see how nice and flexible it is all you have to do is you have to provide this minimum width that is going to lead to the css grid adjusting the number of columns according to the breakpoint great so this is the pure CSS solution to it and you can see that our app now looks really nice. It is usable on mobile screens, on tablet screens and on even large screens. And the, on each of the screen sizes, it's going to show the app in the most optimal way possible for the ease of use of the user. Now, if you want to try it out, you can try it out on the link given in the description. I have already deployed it on materialthemebuilder.zoebkhan.com. But if you want to get the code for it, you can get it from my Buy Me A Coffee shop. The link for that is also given in my description. And as always, if you liked this video and you want to uh, watch more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel so that you can get notified of future videos uh, as I post videos on such topics uh, quite regularly. And you can also comment on the video if you want to share something uh, about this particular combination of strategies that I used uh, to build my uh, responsive Angular app here. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time with another interesting thing to discuss.